Hello, everyone. Here we talk about break-even analysis. In business planning, it is useful and necessary to determine the number of units you need to sell to cover the costs, or the number of units you need to produce a target profit. Analyzing the relationships among costs, volumes, and profits is an important technique in determining the number of units you need to produce and sell, the price to charge, the costs you may incur, and the profit that results. Here is an example of a small business. Eric is planning to set up a business to make and sell wooden birdhouses. To determine how much profit he would make, Eric calculated his income based on different number of birdhouses sold. The brief information is shown on the chart below. So we can see the scale of the production level: zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, and the corresponding revenue, costs, and the income. All calculated in this chart. We can see the workhouse costs: four hundred, four hundred, four hundred, all the way. The whole row, the number is now changing. That means this part of the cost now changing with the quantity of the products. So in that case, we call it fixed cost. So this cost must be something like a rent for the workshop for the working space. So no matter how many you produce, you use the same space. So the rent is not going to changing with the quantity of the production. And we can also see that material and the supply that part directly related to the number of the quantity. When you produce more and you need more material and the supplies. It costs more, so this kind of cost we call the variable cost. And in the chart, we can also see the revenue related to the number of the production as well, and we can see the relationship. Kind of, we can figure out three hundred divided by ten give you thirty, six hundred divided by twenty give you thirty as well. So that's the potential information carried. Eric plan to sell the bird house at a price thirty dollar. So in that case, if we use x to represent the quantity of the products, of the number of the bird houses, then we have total revenue thirty x thirty multiply quantity, and we can list the fixed cost of four hundred dollar. And we can also figure out similarly on the material and the supply. We use one hundred divided by ten give you ten. Two hundred divided by twenty give you ten as well. So Eric assumes that every board house he needs to pay ten dollar on the material and the supplies. That's what is called variable cost per unit. So in that case, we can get the total variable cost, ten x, ten multiply the quantity of the bird houses. We put both part of the cost together, give us the total cost, four hundred plus ten x. So the question for this small business, what Eric is looking for, would be how many bird houses does Eric make and sell to break even. And on the chart, actually, we can see that part. It happened. It appeared when Eric make twenty and sell twenty bird houses, and he has the revenue six hundred dollar. At the same time, the total cost would be six hundred dollar as well. That's what we call the break even. So your total revenue exactly covered the total cost. They meet. So there's another expression: your net income or profit is zero. It shows in the chart as well, and we can look at 
different way. Here we have total revenue function. It is related to the quantity x, any quantity number. That's why we call it a function. And we have total cost function. And we put them in the chart coordinates. Horizontal axis represents the quantity of the products. Vertical axis represents the dollar. Could be total cost, could be fixed cost, could be total revenue. They are all dollars. So with the number what we mentioned for 20 board houses made and the sale, we have $600 revenue. We also have $600 total cost. So if we do not make anything, Eric does not make anything, he doesn't make anything. So with zero quantity, we we'll have zero revenue. So connect these two points, give us the straight line, that is total revenue line, 30x. The $400 cost has nothing to do with the quantity. Even you don't produce anything, you still have $400. So on the vertical line, you have the $400, that point, connect to the same point we have, that's the red line, which is total cost, straight line. So we can clearly see the red line and the green line cross point. They meet at 2600. That's what we call break even point. When Eric produce bird houses exceed this quantity 20, he starts making profit. That's the green area. With that scale of the production, Eric's making profit. But if his production less than 20, the break-even point, he's not going to make money, he, he's actually going to lose money if his production level is low. So understanding break-even analysis Understanding where your break-even point is, it is important. Here we can see from the chart directly. And we can also use the basic concept to have this break-even point solved with mathematical expression. Here it is. We give some explanations of the typical notations we use. We use P to represent price per unit. We use X to represent the quantity of products. And TR, total revenue. So TR comes from P multiply X. And the VC is a variable cost per unit. And the TVC is the total variable cost then TVC come as VC multiply X. And the TFC, sometimes we can just use FC, means fixed cost, or total fixed cost. Fixed cost could have rent fixed cost, and sometimes insurance is also fixed cost, and advertising is also fixed cost. So any manufacturer, they may have different kind of fixed cost. So if you have those kind of information involved in, we may use total fixed cost, put them together. But no matter what, the way you recognizing fixed cost, only look at if this part of cost changing with the quantity of the product. If it changes, then it is variable cost. If it doesn't change, then it is recognized as fixed cost. So we have total cost expression and the PFT to represent profit. So the profit would be the difference, total revenue and the total cost. And we have an another terminology, contribution margin per unit. We simply use price minus variable cost per unit. 
So the reason being called the contribution margin per unit, we look at this part difference. We should have some extra in the price. If you do not have extra part, that means the manufacturer even cannot be run because your price cannot even cover variable cost. That means you cannot pay labor, you cannot get in enough material, so the producing would be ceased. That's not going to happen. So normally, if the business is going, so you should have the price cover the variable cost, and you have a little bit extra. So the extra is the difference. So the difference will be contributed to cover the fixed cost. That's why it is called the contribution margin. If we put them all together, that would be, give us total contribution margin. So that is simply called the contribution margin. Come from the total revenue, take out the total variable cost. So this gives us how much we can use to cover the fixed cost. And we have different perspective to look at, which is contribution rate. So we use the contribution margin divided by the total revenue, or we use contribution margin per unit divided by single unit revenue, which is price. So they are same, called the contribution rate. With all these terminologies, notations being explained, and we can simply use break-even concept. Total cost equals to total revenue, and we can solve the situation about what kind of units you need to break even. So this is a break even units or break even quantity, x. We can express it as a formula. We use total fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. This would give us break even units. Or we can come out of break even sales. When we say break even sales, means described by dollar. So when we talk about the break even, we have two different ways to talk. Either we can use units or we can use dollar. So the break even sales in dollar can directly come with total fixed cost divided by C rate, contribution rate. So that's all we have here for break even analysis. Then we continue the Eric's warehouse business. So the revenue function TR30X, cost function TC400 plus 10X. And we put them together. Break even means TR equals TC. And put both functions in. And then we can have this equation. And we move this equation around solve this quantity x and give us the result x equals 20 would be what we're looking for so at the level of the production 20 units warehouse being produced and sold eric would break even if we use the formula being mentioned earlier we can use the total fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit directly, and we come out the same answer. We have many different ways to say that. Break-even amount, break-even quantity, break-even units. Eric has a limited space to work, and he has a limited time to work. So if everything runs well, Eric can make 100 board houses in a month. So this number is maximum quantity he can do. It is called capacity. Capacity has nothing to do with the process of break-even analysis. When we compare the break-even units and the capacity, we can get some ideas about how healthy the business is in the current situation. We can get the idea about the ability of making profit from this business in the future.
For this case, we already found break-even point for every small business is twenty bird houses. So in that case, if Eric's capacity is a hundred bird houses in a month, so that means he has a bright future. In one month, he exceeds twenty break-even point. He has a great space to make money. As long he exceeds twenty bird houses, the break-even point, and then he can start making profit. If Eric's capacity is only twenty. Then we are not going to see this future to make money because he has no capacity to do that. So that's what we say. It can tell us how healthy the business is when we put break-even point and the capacity together to compare them. See you next time.